Let's welcome folks to stage. But I said ready, there was a problem. I'm technically ready, but that's usual. So I'll go without a script today. So basically, um, we're making the world's first eye tracking head mount display for gamers. So who here has actually heard of us previously? Holy hell, that's amazing. We've only been out of here, like, we've only been out in the open for a couple of weeks. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really keen to show you what we're, what we're about. So without further ado, oh god. <laughs> so, here's a little bit of a demo of what we can do. So I'll be running this demo uh, after this talk. Yes. So, guys who've used the Oculus before and other VRs have noticed probably some issues with hardcore gaming. This is what we're focusing on. So, sorry. So. I want you guys to make a ring with your hands and put the guy who's about to appear here in it. Now keep both of your eyes open when you do this. Now close one eye and open the other. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I wasn't supposed to. <sighs> so anyway, what basically happened is you guys missed and got earned. And this is parallax error, and that happens a lot in virtual reality with the Oculus. So people ask, like, a lot of people say, well, can't we solve that by projecting the cursor out into space? That works to a point, but when there's a big depth between what you're looking at and where you want to aim, it's very hard for most people to integrate that motion and successfully aim. So as a result, um, I don't feel that virtual reality at the moment is competitive as a gaming platform for hardcore users. Like, for me, my first experience in VR involved me chasing someone around with the pyro in Team Fortress 2, getting shot, and not setting people on fire. So, <laughs> so when we bring eyes into the equation, you calibrate, and then suddenly you've got superpowers in VR. You can, the eyes have a real short circuit to the brain. And what this means is they react extremely quickly. Our technology is also extremely accurate, so as you can see before, we could type. Most importantly though, we can do subtle effects like depth of field. If you notice, I'm looking at this guy's head in this demo, and behind, and if you could catch that, the depth of field would change dynamically. So things like this can help eliminate motion sickness to a degree, because it's fast enough. And here for a visualization, for guys up the back, you probably couldn't see that, the green would be blurred. Another big issue that people looking at that's not really on the horizon just at the moment, but it's foveated rendering. We're fast enough to do it in real time. And what this potentially means is about a six times increase in the power available to render scenes on commercial <coughs> hardware. So, for example, your mid-range laptops suddenly become able to display high-end graphics at high resolutions because they're doing a lot less work. So if you see there, that was clear before and now it's blurred. This is clear and it's now blurred again. Beyond just these rudimentary applications, no, sorry, I mean core level applications, we have a lot more detailed stuff that we can do as well, such as ex well, experience oriented things that impact narrative and gameplay, such as eye contact with virtual characters. Things like this really help close the uncanny gap, because you're right there, you're right near a character. The character not being able to see where you're looking is an extreme issue. And just stick at the head a little bit on me, but that's fine. Another thing is, this isn't just for gamers. Imagine you're someone who's stuck in bed, completely paralyzed from the neck down. You can't interact with anything. You don't have a private world. We give these people a private world that they're completely in control of. This is a person who's in late stage, suffering from late stage ALS. He's paralyzed from the neck down and he's controlling this little robot. Um, give me a second. With his eyes, he did a gesture, sorry. I missed it, he did a gesture, he was looking around, he moved its head, looked at his wife, and said, hi. Another project that we've worked on recently is called the I, Pl I Play the Piano Project. This guy, Kota Numajiri, he has muscular dystrophy as well, and he, I apologize, there's no sound, but he likes music, and he was able to lead his school choir using our technology for the first time ever. 
So, people ask us a lot about our specs and how we compare to Oculus out there. We're a, we're a small team based in Japan, and we're making this tech from scratch. Currently, we have WQHD, so that's 2560 by 1440 pixels. There's one caveat, it's currently LCD. We're aiming for OLED within the next month. So currently we only do 60 frames a second, and there's a reason for that. HDMI 1.4 can't push any more pixels. That's it. So we've got to move up to DisplayPort. Our response times currently are 20 millis uh, 24 milliseconds, but we're aiming for five by the time we release. We're using two small eye tracking sensors, so the eye tracking is parallel. One camera, each eye. We're also going to be adding an optical position tracking because that's an absolutely essential feature for presence. So basically, our head mount display is no slouch. Oh god. I'm not good at this. So basically, to recap, the biggest difference that we have from our, like the other people in the ecosystem here is our eye tracking technology. Basically, it makes the difference from having a platform that is a very passive experience that requires other input systems to be viable, to being a viable input system and an active experience in itself. So basically, our strengths, we believe we have maximum usability. So eye tracking, in our opinion, must become the standard of virtual reality within a few years. There's no way around it. It's also extremely fun. You can imagine like doing Iron Man stuff, looking around with your eyes, everything responding to it, your user interfaces at a glance. All of this is possible. Now, our accuracy, it's a lot better than traditional systems. Traditional eye tracking systems are at a distance from you, which causes significant approximation error to occur. Our system is built right into an enclosed environment that we control and know all the details about. So it's the perfect environment for it and you can get the best tracking bar none. So the disruptive graphics expression that we have here is bokeh and focus. So depth of field makes it a lot easier on the eyes. You can use our, our system a lot longer than any other without feeling sick. Foveated rendering, this is a big one that's in a future goal of ours, is to reduce the processing power required for our gamers. This particularly applies to ray tracing. If anyone wants to see real-time ray tracing in VR, it's got to be foveated. So this is very attractive to game devs. And um, to the skeptics out there, let me say it is actually a very big optimization, even without ray tracing. Also, we're evolving AI and communication. So we're bringing the eyes into the game, which means the game can now read you and know what you're doing. So characters know where you're looking, what you're looking at. Enemies can avoid your attacks and anticipate and coordinate actions based on your perception. Imagine horror games that know exactly where you're looking and what state your mind is in. I think we'll be handing out nappies for that demonstration. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, have a defibrillator on standby. <laughs> So, to the guys who are maybe interested in investing out there, our market target is the top of the market. We're aiming at the hardcore gamers. People probably like most of, well, who here would classify themselves as a hardcore gaming addict? So, not that many, but hey, we're aiming at you guys. And that segment is worth $1.6 billion in the next few years. Basically, as I said to recap, we're not just about gaming. We have a we have, implement, uh, sorry, we have applications in ALS, disability support, surgery, medicine, virtual reality browsers, tours and sightseeing, virt virtual tours and sightseeing, simulation, training, research, and just general geekery. So, how are we going to get content? This is our big issue. Like, I mean, we're making a head mount display, and so we're going to have to survive in the ecosystem, and we're thinking about this. So we're going to be releasing a Kickstarter campaign in the next couple of months, probably March or April. Um, that'll come along with SDKs. We're going to have a bundled DLL that works already out of the box in Unity. Sorry, not Unity, in Unreal. And a Unity plugin that works straight for Unity. So you just drop in, play. Anyone who's been doing virtual reality development will be able to get up and running in a couple of minutes. And um, we're already talking to some, some big people in the industry, so um, we might even be able to get some content out along with it. So they're bundling up and, yeah. So basically, we put it out to you guys, what do you guys want to do with eye tracking? Can you imagine what we can do with it and what you can't do without it? Thank you. Time for a demo. So 
So give me a moment here as I fire up Unity. It's been a full of sleep, unfortunately. That should be your tagline. Imagine what you can do with it and can't do without it. Okay, so I'm going to try and do this when I can't really see. So this is a normal head mount display. The screen is just moon mirroring, so it's a little bit slow up there, but it's really fast down here. I'm now calibrating. This process should be done once per user, and you can use iris recognition to remember who they are and load their profile. Yeah, the uh, military guys had a little talk to us about this. <laughs> so you see when I wrap it up, it goes pretty fast. I'll let them build up so they've got a chance. And now. This one's a little more risky. <laughs> Excuse me while I recalibrate. Oh god. <laughs> Sorry, can you hit the delete key really, really fast? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Where's my caps lock? What? That's not a V key. <laughs> Uh, any questions? <laughs> First of all, take my money. <laughs> so uh, I'm wondering about your price. Yeah. You're launching the Kickstarter. What are you? What are? What is the? What are you aiming for in terms of price for this hardware? Aiming at 400. Okay. 400. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, let's get four more questions. Yeah, you gotta find them on your own. Field of view is the same as Oculus is offering. Okay. So, just curious. Uh, yep. Where are the cameras? Come check it out later. They're, they're not visible. So, yes. sorry, my, my field of view is like limited. Yes. I've always been excited about virtual reality when I'm coding, and I like yep. the eye tracking to let me pick in my code where I'm going to fight and stuff. I figure yes. I'm going to come out. Do you guys act actively develop in this kind of virtual environment tracking of your own? Not yet, no. It's um it's not ready for that yet, but we're planning to. That would be a massively cool development thing. Because I get that as well. I like I don't want to move my hand off the keyboard, I just want to code. So yes. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the company and like as a company where you had stage okay. words, funding, etc.? Basically, we're, we formed eight months ago as a company in Japan and Tokyo, and we've been working in Asia, which is basically the tech central of the world, and we've got access to a lot of the best resources there to get things together. We have had our very first round of angel funding back then when we formed, and um, we've been just running off that since. So we're currently here trying to raise in Silicon Valley. So, um, 
I want to preface my question by saying that I think what you're working on is incredibly impressive and terrific, and I'll be first in line to buy one. Thank you. That said, one thing that you mentioned was kind of in passing and kind of jumped out of my mind when you mentioned that there's uh, uh, iris recognition, right? Yes. For configuration profiles. Yes. Is, uh, if the camera and the capture is robust enough to recognize one iris from another and differentiate them, it, would you say there's a legitimate concern for you with privacy with this device or devices like it? Because I'm sure there's going to be copycats. Yes. Um, might take your, uh, your biometrics. A photo, yeah, and that's used as a kind of a fairly secure biometric yep. in different contexts. That's absolutely a concern because we plan to actually let people use that, uh, use our raw feeds in the demos, and potentially that would have to be a user setting. We'll say, would you like people to have access to your raw feeds? Yes, no, and lock it down because um, there's a lot you can do with the raw feeds. If people have a custom algorithm they want to put in. They can recognize whether someone's smiling or not, or disabled, like, sorry, not disabled, but medical researchers can use their own algorithms to adjust things and make things better, like for uh, ophthalmology studies and whatnot. So we don't particularly want to limit it, but yeah, security is an issue. Sorry, uh, scissors, paper, off? <laughs> uh, one more. Okay. okay. <laughs> so have you talked to face shift? Uh, uh, can you track anything other than just the pupil, or can you do eyelids and brow? Um, do it with the Rift on to get the full face. You could technically do eyebrows, yes, but we don't do that yet. Yeah. Okay. So, some people, they're not visible, but generally speaking, they are. One thing, incidentally, is this thing's a little bit weak to mascara at the moment. It can, gets confused, particularly by its reflective makeup, so something we're working on. But. What about glasses? Uh, it can go through some glasses without a problem. Uh, the frames and variability in size of the frames can cause issues. Sometimes their glasses are too far out and cause a reflection that blocks the pupil out at particular ranges. So glasses are an unsolved problem, but it generally works. Particularly if you're nearsighted, you don't know. All right. Uh, let's go one last question right there, and then we're going to wrap it up. <laughs> no, um, no, 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 fine. What, uh, how heavy is the headset in comparison okay. to Oculus, and how are you tackling ergonomics? Ergonomics, um, uh, next question. <laughs> Ergonomics is an active area of research. Because um, we're based in Asia, we've had some issues where, um, for example, in this, the size of the Western nose versus the Asian nose is slightly different. And there's uh, more like the position, actually. And um, it bites sometimes. So ergonomics has to be uh, done, in fact, probably a per region basis, ideally. but. So we're going to solve that by probably having some moving parts in there so you can adjust the reviews. Yeah, because the bridge of noses can make a huge difference and people with large noses get bit at the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you.